On today's episode, we are doing some classy high-end decor on a budget, and to help you accomplish that, I'm giving you stuff for free, so let's get started. Welcome to Design to the Nines. If this is the first time we're meeting, I'm Natalie Callahan, and it is my goal to help you feel more powerful in your DIY and home decor. So let's get started on our first project. We are gonna be making this beautiful magnolia print. And to accomplish that, you're gonna need a piece of wood cut to 12 by 14 inches. The first thing we're gonna do to this is we are gonna paint it out in white chalk paint to give us a nice blank canvas. And then we're gonna let that dry. Now for this next part, I am providing you with a free printable. Isn't that pretty? I, I love this and I, I'm so excited about it. I took this to Staples and I had it print out on ledger paper, which I believe is 11 inches by 17 inches. And this is what it looks like. So printing this out in color at Staples cost me about 78 cents. To me, that's totally worth it. It's a reversed image. They print it out on a laser printer. The color is very pungent and that will help us in our image transfer process, which is what we're gonna do. What we're gonna be doing is cut off the excess on the top and bottom. There's a few inches on the top and the bottom that you're not gonna need. We're gonna be taking one of my favorite products, which is Liquitex. And Liquitex is a gel matte medium, and this helps us to do what's called an image transfer. And I just apply that generously, but not like super thick. <laughs> We're gonna flip it over and very carefully try to center it on and place it and then smooth out all the edges. Then it's a waiting game. I let mine dry overnight, but really you could do it a little bit quicker if you like at least two to three hours I would wait. The longer you wait, the more it will saturate your image. And now we're gonna remove it by taking some water in a bowl and taking a soft washcloth and removing very carefully the paper and what is left behind is this beautiful image. Now this process can make it look a little bit rustic. I'm okay with that kind of a look, but if you're very careful and particular about it, you can get a pretty crisp, clean look as well. beautiful picture, it needs a frame, and we're gonna just go outside real quick and cut a simple miter frame. Okay, we want the inside of the frame to be kind of this lower profile, and the outside will be this thicker profile. This is just some trim that I get at Home Depot, and it's really inexpensive. I use it a lot of for my stuff. Okay, and then we're gonna move this to a 45 degree angle. So we're just gonna cut off the tip on a 45 degree angle. So we don't need to overcomplicate this. We can keep this really simple. So long as the side pieces are the same and the top and bottom pieces are the same, everything should line up good. Let's keep it nice and simple. We're just cutting 45 degree miter cuts. Cutting a miter frame is not that hard. You can use like one of those miter boxes if you'd like by hand. I just like my power tools and so I'm gonna cut it on that. Once you have one piece cut, you can use it as a pattern for the next piece. You can do this for the top and bottom pieces and for the sides. Don't you love how scientific I'm being? <laughs> Let's see how we did. There we go. Then we're gonna just stain it and let that dry. And then we're gonna just attach it with some E6000 and hot glue. That should do the trick. Because our wood is pretty thin, I didn't wanna shoot in nails. I think that we'll be okay with this. Nothing super complicated here, I promise. You can handle this. <laughs> For 
for less than $10. We have a pretty amazing piece of art that is beautiful and classy. And to help you get this job done, again, I will provide the link for the free printable in the description box below. Make sure you follow the directions there. It is pretty easy to do, but if you miss a step, it makes it a little bit complicated. And I really want you to get that free print. So check for the instructions and the link in the description box below. Today's episode is part of a collaboration with a whole bunch of amazing and talented ladies here on YouTube. It's part of a scavenger hunt. And the prize at the end of the scavenger hunt is a Cricut Joy. You know I love my Cricut machines. I am a huge fan and I would love for you to have the opportunity to win one of those. And in order to win it, what you need to do is watch all eight videos on the playlist. I will link the playlist below. You need to comment on that video and you also need to find out what the secret word for each video is. What you need to do is watch all the videos, comment on all the videos and collect all eight secret words and then email them to the email address that will be listed below and you can see it right here on the screen as well and then there will be a random drawing and one of you will win a Cricut Joy and I am so excited about that and I'm so excited for you to check out these other ladies channels they're awesome and my secret word is magnolia Next up, I want to make a classy magnolia pillow cover. We are gonna sew a simple cover out of some drop cloth. And I've been working on this drop cloth for probably a couple years. What we're gonna do is take our pillow and measure it. And then we're going to add two and a half inches in each direction. Now, the reason we're doing this much excess is because I'm gonna show you how to do a special edge treatment to give it a more finished quality in just a second. Canvas drop cloth tears so easy. So that's what I recommend doing because you will get a nice straight line that way. Today we're going to be making an envelope style pillow cover and so for the back we're going to need two pieces so the width will stay the same but we will need to create an overlap so what we do to do this is we divide the pillow height in half and then we add three to four inches to each side. I went with four this time around only because it worked out perfectly that way. Now that we've got our pillow squares cut out for our envelope style pillow, we're gonna take the front piece and apply our image to it. And I wanted to do this first because we were gonna need to iron it on and I didn't want any weird creases in it. We are gonna take this image that I designed for you and it's got a beautiful magnolia on it and it says bloom where you are planted. And this will be a part of that link that I've already mentioned for the art piece. So they will both be in the same location to keep it simple for you. And you are gonna need some special image transfer paper. Sublimation is all the rage these days. And you'll have to let me know if you want me to dabble in sublimation, but it does require a special printer setup and special paper. This does not require a special printer, but it does require special paper and not all image transfer papers are created equal. So I found this one. It's Leslie Riley's Transfer Artist Paper and it comes in a package of 18. It is a little pricey when you buy it in a package of 18. It's about $31 right now as of recording this video for 18. So it makes it like $1.75 a sheet. But if you kind of put it in the whole scheme of things, it does make it affordable when you're using like the drop cloth and all of that and it, it's gonna turn out really great. So I will link this below, but this you can only print out on an inkjet printer, which most people have at home. So you could just print this out on your regular printer at home, and then you have this beautiful image. And you'll notice that it's all in reverse. So I've already done that for you. What we're gonna wanna do first is we're gonna wanna cut off a lot of the excess of this white and get it as close to our image as possible and try to just get rid of as much of this excess as possible. I'm gonna just use my regular iron this time around and we're gonna get it as hot as it can and remove the steam function. So it needs to be hot and dry for about two minutes very carefully. Press it on with a lot of pressure. It's gonna take a little bit of arm muscle and we are going to iron this on.
Now, you definitely want to peel this off while it's still hot. So what you might wanna do is pull up one corner and keep the iron on it and just gradually move the iron and peel it back at the same time. That way it will pull off easy. And then you're left with this beautiful transferred image. This is so pretty. I love this, it's so cute. So we're gonna sew this pillow and sewing is super easy if you can drive a car and even if you can't drive a car, you can sew because I actually learned to sew at eight years old so I know that you can do this. This is the sewing machine that I recommend for beginners and honestly, I've been sewing for decades now and I love this machine. And what's great about it is you can actually control the speed right here as well as having a lot of stitching options. It seems like it has hardly any problems I just think this is a great machine and I'll link it below. This is not sponsored by the way. I just really like this machine. The first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna take our two back pieces and then we're gonna sew a hem on one side on the long side of both pieces. If you want to, you can pin this, but I've been sewing long enough that I, I feel like I don't need to do it for this hem part. To get started sewing, you just push on the pedal much like you would a gas pedal and start stitching away. So here we go. And then don't forget to back stitch. And then so, so, so. Okay, so here's our pillow front. Isn't that cute? We're gonna lay this out flat and then we are gonna take our two flaps and this is how we're gonna create an envelope. And we are gonna take one piece and line up the corners and on the top first, match up the corners. And then you take the bottom one and then you match up the corners. And then we are gonna clip it together with these handy clips. I love these so much easier and less poked things and I'm not putting pins in my mouth, which I'm known for. But we're gonna use these clips. I ordered them off of Amazon and they are so much fun and they work really good. <laughs> Then we literally sew around all the edges, backstitch. Cut off the corners, flip it out. And then we're gonna iron out the corners of it and get it nice and smooth because I've got one little added element so that's gonna kind of make it look a little bit more high end. So we're gonna start this on the bottom, but all we're gonna do now that we've got this ironed is just go all the way around. And I just am gonna line the edge of the presser foot up with the edge of this, and then make sure that the needle is set kind of on the left-hand side. And we're gonna create like a little border. And then just go to town. We love to sew. <laughs> We're gonna stuff this and hope our measurements worked out good. You know, these type of pillowcases are a little forgiving, so we will probably be okay. So this is like scrap fabric for me. For three to four dollars, you have an amazing, beautiful pillow cover that you can put over another one of your pillows. Super classy, super high end, and pennies on the dollar. I kinda love that. <laughs> but isn't this a fun technique? And it's supposed to be color fast. It's supposed to go through the wash really well. Isn't this fun? <laughs> All right, so we can't do a magnolia themed episode and not do a magnolia wreath, right? <laughs> and if you've ever priced these out, they can get pretty expensive really fast. And so we're gonna make our own. We are going to use an 18 inch grapevine wreath that you can find in a lot of thrift stores or at any craft store for very inexpensive. Then I have some bushes of magnolia flowers and some magnolia leaves that I picked up from Hobby Lobby for $5 a bunch on sale. Then I have some random magnolia leaves that I picked up on an after Christmas clearance sale and I used in an older magnolia wreath. Now we're gonna hot glue them into place in kind of a spiral fashion, but if a leaf pokes out here and there, it's totally fine. This is not rocket science. Literally all of us can do this, I promise. Then just poke in our magnolia flowers and that's it. Super duper easy. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm not hanging mine on my front door at this time, only because I've got some serious paint issues going on with our front door, which is going to result in a little front porch makeover here soon. But I am displaying it on this wreath stand instead. And if you're interested in how I made this, I will link that episode below because I think it's super cute. What do you think? Now we spent less than $20 on our wreath and if I do say so myself, I think it looks every bit as good as the $150 and $233 ones. What do you think? Now don't forget to watch all eight episodes in the series, collect all the secret words, comment below, do everything you're supposed to so that you can enter to win that contest and I want to wish you the best of luck. If you enjoyed this episode, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. And if you like this content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and become part of the DIY Niner family. And to all of my DIY Niners, I just want to remind you that you are more powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.